Hi again, and welcome to what should be the last lesson in this Space Invaders course. If you've made it all the way through, then well done to you. Um, I must admit it's been quite a few more hours of video than I was expecting to have to make, but I've had real good, real good fun doing it, and I hope you've had fun following the course. So we've only got a few li last little bits to tidy up, just to polish up the game. And after we've done that, we'll have a little bit of a chat about what we can do next. So let's get straight into that and start up our Tickety software and load in our very, very nearly finished game. So you should know the drill by now. We're going to load in our last lesson, which was 24, and we're going to save it as lesson 25. And then in here, and we're done. So let's have a look at our game and see which bits we can start to tidy up on. So if I run the code, uh, come in here and run that. One of the first things which um, we can have a look at is at the moment we can actually do quite a machine gun effect on the aliens. So we can really start killing them. And it is making the game just a little bit too easy, I think. So let's start by just taking down the number of bullets that our player can fire. So inside here we have the player ship and we have our our bullets and we have the player bullets and maximum player bullets is set to five at the moment so let's take that down to say um, let's try it at two and see what that works out as so that's making it a bit harder to actually hit and, and shoot our aliens so that should be okay at two what we can also have a look at then is the actual alien missiles. Um, if we go back into that and start our game. At the moment they're all falling down at the same speed. So perhaps we could put a bit of variation into that speed. So let's come back into our code. And if we go to our spawn missiles, so spawn alien missiles function, we can see in here, this is where we create a, a missile. At the moment, we're setting it to a fixed speed. So what we could do is have that speed being a little bit random. So what I want to do is I want to get a reasonable range of speeds. Um, so let's say that we use this math.random function. Okay. So we could get it to choose a number. Um, and the number I want to end up with here is somewhere between 0.5 and 1.5. Um, so let's see how we do that. So we can choose a larger range of numbers. So let's say we choose 10 times what we want. Okay. Because remember the math.random function will give us back an integer value. So we need to get um, a range of values. And again, we can use fractions here as well, so decimals. So if I choose between 5 and 15, but divide it by 10, can you see that that will give us, so the 5 will give us 0 0.5, which is a nice slow missile, and the 15 will give us a 1.5, which is a reasonably fast missile. So let's try that and see what it looks like. And you can see that we now have a range of missile speeds. And that will just make it that little bit harder to dodge them now and again. As I start killing aliens... There comes a point at which there aren't actually enough aliens on screen with, with the way that we're deciding whether they fire or not to actually have enough missiles coming down. The decision to whether an alien fires or not is, is done in the draw aliens function. So in the draw aliens function here, we create this decision about whether an alien will fire or not. So we have this math.random. And using math.random with a single number, we'll choose a number between one and this number here. So we'll get between one and 50. And we're at the moment saying, if it's equal to a single value, so in other words, we have a one in 50 chance of it deciding to fire, then we will actually spawn an alien missile. 
And if you think about it, um, when a missile becomes available to fire, because remember we only have a n limited number of slots, then if we have um, a full grid of our 48 aliens, then ev every time a missile becomes available to fire, we will fire on the next tick. Because with, with 48 aliens, each having a 1 in 50 chance of firing, it's pretty much guaranteed that somebody will fire. If not this tick, then definitely the next tick. So we have our constant sort of 20 missiles coming down. But when we get down to just a few aliens, especially at the one alien, then every time we do a tick, we only have a 1 in 50 chance of firing any missiles. So it's almost like he's only firing every 50 steps. And of course, that's why we then our, our, our missiles all dry up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change it from this fixed probability. And we're going to create a variable here. So we're going to call that fire prob ability. And then we're going to do a less than or equal to as our decision. <clears throat> so if we set fire probability equal to 1, then every time our math.random figure chooses the value 1, it will fire because we'll be less than or equal to 1. And that will be back to where we are at the moment with a 1 in 50 chance. However, if, if we perhaps make that fire probability equal to 5, then the values 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, so 5 separate values, will cause the alien to fire a missile. So we then have a 1 in 10 chance of firing a missile. So we can adjust this variable's value to give us more or less chance of firing. So especially when we get down to our lower numbers of aliens, if we increase this probability, we should get each individual alien firing more often, which will make our game a bit more challenging. So we need to, first of all, define this variable. So I'm going to copy that name. And we need to define it out in the global space, so up at the very top here. So we have our, our missile, alien missile variables here. And let's initialize that to 1, which is the starting probability. We then need to adjust this value dependent upon the number of aliens we have. And we know that that was done in our um, move aliens function. So in our move aliens function down here, um, at some point, we did this move delay. Oh, it was actually in our calc alien speed function. That's where we actually did the calculations. <clears throat> so in calc alien speed, you can see here, this is where we are saying, if, if there's only one alien left, then we speed up and, and so on. So we can do our probability setting in here as well. So let's set our fire probability. So if there's only one alien, let, let's set that fire probability to five. So there's a, a fairly good one in, one in 10 chance of him firing. So we'll fire one every 10 steps. When we have less than or equal to four, so we saw when we had four aliens, we were actually getting a reasonable number of missiles coming down. So let's set our fire probability for that equal to one. And again, for the rest of them then, that fire probability equal to one is probably okay. So let me just put that in, in all the rest of these as well. And here. <clears throat> we did also see that when we only had two or three aliens, again, we started to lose some of our missile firing. So let me grab hold of another if else block. And let's put that in after there. Okay, so else if aliens alive is less than or equal to three, then we'll set a fire probability of, let's just say three and see what that does. So let's give that a go and see if it works or not. So again, let me just spend a bit of time just getting all these aliens killed. So we're now down to our last three or four, and you can see that we're still firing a, a reasonable number of missiles. And if I can hit one of these last two, eventually. There we go. And we can see now we're down to our single alien. And he does seem to be firing a reasonable number of missiles. And, and again, he's quite hard to hit at this speed. So um, that should probably be a reasonable end to our game. And this is actually quite a fitting screenshot to have at the moment because I think we've actually finished programming Space Invaders. 
There's obviously a range of things that we can now do. But just to, just to confirm that, I, I hope that you have really enjoyed learning how to code and learning how to program of your very own game right from scratch. And, and even if you haven't, had never picked up and, and programmed a line of code before, I hope you've now learned a whole range of skills because we've really covered all of the basic programming techniques that you're going to need to both continue with your Take 80 programming, but also to continue on then and develop your skills in other areas and other languages. My channel is dedicated to helping you develop these programming skills. If you have a look around, you'll find lots more projects. Um, some of them will be more advanced games, such as the Space Commander project, and others will be um, what I'm calling programming shorts, where we'll be using very much the skills that we've learned during Space Invaders to use Tick80 or, or some other software to develop um, games, but doing the whole game either within one or two lessons. So please do make sure you check out all the other projects. Also have a look through the retro gaming sections. Again, those retro games give you loads of ideas for making your own games and having go a go at your own programming projects. So if we have a look at the real version of Space Invaders, this, this is the original arcade version. <clears throat> again, I'm playing it through an emulator. And again, if you want help on how to set up and run emulators so you can play a whole range of retro games, do have a look at some other tutorials in, in my website, which will show you how to set up, um, well, this one's called MAME uh, for playing old arcade machines. Um, but also there's lots of um, tutorials then for setting up other emulators to emulate um, old computers uh, and various um, consoles such as the um, Mega Drive and so on. But if we actually play this game then, <clears throat> this is what we've based our Space Invaders on. So you can see we have our alien array here. But again, in this, in this real version of it, we have our bases down the bottom, which again provide a bit of protection from the alien missiles. We'll also then, as we shoot aliens, eventually we should get what's known as the mystery ship coming across the top of the screen. So we just have to wait for that to appear, and I'll show you what that does. So eventually it will come, I do promise you. There it is. And again, if you hit the mystery ship, you get a, a certain number of points for that. So again, you can see that there are a range of extra features which you could add into our um, version of Space Invaders. And really, that's you've now got enough skills and uh, programming skills to do that for yourself. And that's really where I'm going to leave you. So, really, you've got the basics of the game. Have a play and just develop it as far as you want. Put different features in um, and off you go. So back into Tick80. And really then just make sure that you save your work because again, this is our finished game. So don't make, so make sure you don't lose that last little bit of work we did. And really then, do make sure that you continue with your programming. It, it is such a valuable skill, especially um, these days. So do make sure you carry on there and really just have fun learning and developing your programming skills. And hopefully then I'll see you in some of my other projects. So bye for now. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.